Hey everyone, Jonathan Silva here. We're gonna work with SharePoint and Power Automate once again, this time focusing on doing a bulk update of records based off of a people person or group column that we have on that SharePoint list. We're gonna do this in two different ways. One of them is gonna be relatively just straightforward, but with a lot of steps. The other is by adding in an OData filter query on one of our actions. Let's jump right in and see exactly how they're both done. All right, so here is my SharePoint list that I am working on. I have just four records here, but obviously this could be a lot larger if I wanted to. And we are focusing on this column right here called employee name. This column is a person column or person group type of uh, column here in SharePoint that I want to filter down this list to. And in fact, my use case is I want to be able to update the records based on a specific person. Maybe this person has left our organization or we want to reassign items to someone else. So I'm gonna use Power Automate to do this because I can do this bulk update instead of doing it each and every single time, clicking and editing here in SharePoint, I can use Power Automate to help that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by looking at one of two different ways to do this. The first way here in Power Automate is the longer way is to go ahead and do a manual trigger, get items from that SharePoint list, go ahead and get all of the items, get all of the rows, and then filter down that record, filter down that list that we are returning. For my get items, I don't have any extras in here. There's nothing done, no advanced parameters, nothing. Just give me everything. Then I have a filter array added in to filter down the list based on the value list of items and choose exactly what I wanna filter down to. In this case, I'm choosing the employee name column and the display name from that employee name, which is our person column. And I'm gonna say that the employee display name is equal to Matt Peterson. In this case, you'll see that Matt just has one right here. So now that I filtered down to that using filter array, I wanna loop over all of the records that have that name in it and then go ahead and update them with a different name. However, the way it works with this is we just don't have the ability to get to that automatically. So we need to go ahead and use this apply to each, this looping action from the filter down table. Then we need to do a parse JSON data operation. The parse JSON data operation will allow us to actually extract all the individual values for each of those records to utilize in our update. Without parse JSON, we can't get to all these individual fields in our dynamic content. So I've gone to my parse JSON. I have my, in here you'll see, I am using the body list of items from the filter array, passing that in. I'm putting in my dynamic content or in my schema here, the output from my filter array. Go ahead and test that ahead of time. Then you can copy and paste your output in here and use that as your sample payload. And then once I have that done in my parse JSON, I can come in and do my update item. I can point to the ID and the title to match up against those records, and then go ahead and choose my employee name. I've done that here in my advanced parameters. Take my employee name and just, I've chosen someone else here. I'm gonna change everything from Matt to Allison. So I'm just gonna point like this. I'm not gonna go ahead and change anything else, and that's all I want. So if I come in here and save and then test this, you'll notice it's going to return all of the records filtered down from this filter array action and then update each and every single one of those records in our apply to each here for uh, the, to have this new name. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit test. Now what you will notice as you do this, you're gonna get this warning here at the top. This warning that we get is our flow checker warning. Okay, that's gonna essentially gonna tell us that this action would perform better if we did some type of limiting parameter, filter query, something on the get items action here. That's an O data filter query. That is the next thing we're gonna take a look at. But let's go ahead and test this and see what it does and see how it works for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and find all the records that have Matt's name on it, filter down to only those, and then update them now that we have that parse JSON to show for Allison's name. So I'm gonna come here 
There's Matt Peterson. It may take a quick little refresh. Sometimes SharePoint takes a second. There's Matt Peterson. It should flip over. There it is. It flips right over to Allison Gonzalez. Perfect for us. If I had you know, 100,000 records that way, it would go ahead and loop over the 100,000 records. And I would say it, sh it would show one of 100,000 right there. And just it would do it for me. Now, that's one way of doing this, but there is a better way and a more efficient and a cleaner way of setting this up. And that's by using an O data filter query on this get items action. So if I redo this entire workflow, you'll notice I have less steps. I have a new one here, same get items, except in my filter query, which I've added in here for my advanced parameters, I pointed to the employee name and the title of that employee name. Now there's two ways to do this. Because it is a person column here, I can do employee name equals or does not equal, and I can go ahead and look at the larger information there, but it's not gonna give me the exact value to point to. What I need to do is add in this forward slash here, and then we can point to either title or email. And if I choose one or the other, I can say the title or the email either equals or is not equal to a specific value. So if equals is our EQ, not equals would be NE for not equals. And then I can point to a specific email address or a person's name. By setting it up this way, it's gonna be the best way for us to go ahead and point to those specific values that we want, those specific items or records from that SharePoint list, filter down to only those using our filter query in the most efficient way. And now what you'll see is I'm gonna do the same for each or the same apply to each loop here for each of the return records from our filter down table or list. We're gonna go ahead and update that item. And I've done it the same way. I'm pointing to the site, the list. This time I'm just using the dynamic content straight from the get items. And I'm gonna to point to and I'll change it to a different person. Maybe I'll, I'll choose Austin this time. And again, I could just choose a lot of people. So now anytime you'll see my name, it should change to Austin's name. So I'll go ahead and save and test this. It's gonna be the exact same way, but you'll notice it's much cleaner. It's more efficient this way. And we won't get that little warning at the top like you saw in the previous workflow. So I hit test. We'll do another manual test. And now that our test is running, you'll see, wow, again, it's really fast. There's only two records here. If there's a lot more, it'd go a little bit slower, showing one of two. I can come in here to SharePoint. Oh, there it is. It went really fast. It did say my name earlier. Now it says Austin's name. It's now allowing us to go ahead and do that bulk update to all of those records filtered down by the person in a person column here in SharePoint. And it's gonna work the exact same way with a group or anything else that we might have here in SharePoint. All right, so as we work through here, what you will notice is there's many different ways using Power Automate to go ahead and complete an action, to do the task in front of us. But by learning O data filters and adding them into your get items or list rows present, whatever it is, your get action, you can go ahead and set up your workflow to work a little bit faster, more efficiently, a little bit more streamlined to get to that final outcome you desire, but in the best way possible. If you like this video and all the other videos we put out here with Power Automate or SharePoint, Power BI, whatever it is, go ahead, drop a like, hit that subscribe button to see more content from myself and all of us here at Pragmatic Works.